Okay, here we are for the last part of the lecture of today. And uh, so, the wiki theorem that I just proved is uh, nothing but a lemma in order to prove the bolzano weierstrass theorem, but not only that, this wiki theorem is really powerful. However, theorem of Bolzano and Weierstrass. There are two versions, they are not completely equivalent, but however, I will give you now the version for sequences. Uh, bolzano weierstrass theorem for sequences uh, is now nothing but uh, quite a trivial consequence, a corollary of, uh, of a wiki theorem. Mm. And so, it says that every bounded sequence has a convergent subsequence. Remember that we proved that every sequence has a monotonic subsequence. Here we add the hypothesis to be bounded and then we found a stronger uh, consequence that it has to be convergent. Okay, proof. <clears throat> so, so let a n be a bounded sequence. This means that there exists two numbers L1, L2 in R such that L1 less or equal AN less or equal L2 for every N. Then if BK is equal to a and k is a subsequence of a n then of course we have that a and k which is equal to b k is bounded exactly by the same bounds okay so every subsequent Every subsequence of a bounded sequence is bounded too with the same bounds. Okay, this is trivial, but I wanted really to prove. Now, by wiki theorem, by previous theorem, it is possible to extract from a n. a monotonic subsequence BK so for what we already established BK is then both monotonic and bounded Therefore, by the theorem, uh, the only the main theorem on monotonic sequences, BK is convergent. End of the proof. Okay, and this is also the end of sequences, but sequences will be very present now. Hmm? So, um, so we will. Um, we will really go back uh, on sequences, we will use uh, 
a lot of sequences. And uh, so, so no, now let us go to the other chapter that is about limits of functions. That is a um, topics that you already know, most of you know. Of course, sequences are functions so that uh, uh, the chapter on, on limit of sequences is a particular um, is a particular case of uh, the concept of limits of functions and uh, but limits of functions are much more general. So we start from limits for x going to plus infinity in order to understand the, the connection between limits of sequences and limits of functions. So uh, first we consider a function defined in this way, E is a subset of R hmm? it, that is upper, upper unbounded And uh, this means that uh, instead of considering just the natural numbers, here you have uh, as a set E, which is green, for instance, this guy here, and then some points. Okay, this is E. Mm -hmm. You consider a function f from E to R function. And the first question here is what is the behavior of f as x grows? We will see the, the idiomatic sentence when x goes or tends to plus infinity. Hmm? Uh, as usual, as in the previous case, you can have very different models uh, of, uh, of uh, functions. For instance, uh, I don't know, example, for instance, f of x is equal to 1 of x. And here, When x goes to plus infinity, this is a branch, here there is another branch, this is a hyperbola, everybody knows. And this is, uh, we can say intuitively that f approaches zero. Another stupid example, not stupid, but very well known, not complicated, just useful in order to fix the intuition, is f of x is equal to x squared and uh, this is uh, I I'm just uh, consider positive x because I'm considering the case x is going to plus infinity for mimicking sequences and uh, here I would say that f grows unbounded And here the idioma is f approaches plus infinity. And the last example, probably you imagine there are many other examples to be treated. Of course, the, the 
classification of behaviors can be extremely complicated if we take into account strange behaviors, but the third example can be f of x is equal to cosine of x. And here, this is, and you see, f oscillates and doesn't go anywhere precise, anywhere specific. Okay, f oscillates. And uh, so, so, however, so there are many, many possible, remember, remember the word asymptotic behaviors. Okay, so um, just mimicking sequences, go back to the first example. That is f of x is equal to 1 over x. One, can also say that E is equal to R minus zero here, where it is the set where the algebraic expression one over X is not pathologic and it is properly defined. And uh, this is a sort of natural domain of the function. The question is what happens when X grows larger and larger And uh, so, notice here what happens. Remember what we said for sequences. There was an n bar here, let us call x bar, such that we first fix epsilon larger than zero. And here, epsilon is this distance here. Sorry, this is epsilon. Here, there is another epsilon. And uh, remember that we said eventually in n, the function is trapped in a sort of neighborhood in an interval centered at zero and with, uh, with two epsilon. And so this is uh, probably the value of what we call n bar and now we call it x bar. So after x bar, the right hand side of x bar, the function is trapped here. So we can say that as a natural generalization, as a natural generalization of the notion of limit of a sequence one can use for the example the following definition of lim f of x, here we have to specify x goes to plus infinity equal to zero. The definition can sound like this. For every epsilon larger than zero, there exists an x bar now in R such that for every x larger than x bar, f of x in absolute value is less than epsilon. Okay? This is extremely natural. This really mimics what we, we, we saw for sequences, and uh, of course, if we consider other cases, in which the limit is non-zero, 
so is a generic real number L in R we can propose this definition for every epsilon larger than zero there exists an X bar in R such that whenever X is larger than X bar then f of x is distant from L less than epsilon. Good. And uh, the picture we have to have in mind is the following. We have here L a graph of a function which is something ex extremely complicated, extremely strange, but once we fix a value of epsilon okay, so here we have L plus epsilon And here we have L minus Epsilon. Okay. Here, X bar is easily found here. And after X bar, the graph of the function F, the green graph, let me be more precise here, lies inside this stripe here. The stripe here is a, a stripe centered in L and contained between the two values L minus Epsilon, L plus Epsilon. It is a just a vertical stripe, a vertical interval, including all values between L minus Epsilon, L plus Epsilon. Okay? Extremes excluded. And this is uh, extremely natural once we come from sequences and there is another another generalization that concerns we can also generalize the notion generalized from sequences the notion of divergent function of divergent function and uh, we say that f of x goes to plus infinity as x goes to plus infinity f for every k in r we could restrict k, k positive, but it is not so important. There exists x bar such that for every x larger than x bar, f of x is larger than k. We also write lim f of x equal to plus infinity, but now we have to put here the specific x goes to plus infinity because uh, for subsequences it was as absolutely clear uh, there was no other possibility and could also could just go to plus infinity I will clarify why what I mean by, by, by this in the next lecture okay and uh, moreover f of x goes to minus infinity for x goes to plus infinity this is the negative divergence f for every k in r again there exists x bar such that when x is less than x bar then oh sorry when x is larger than x bar then f of x is less than k Okay, sometimes you find in book here for every k larger than zero and here f of x less than minus k. So it's just a matter of, uh, of language, it's just a matter of, uh, of the taste. How do you prefer to, 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 to 
calibrate this definition. It is not so important. And so, in a perfectly natural way, one can be interested in studying the limits of functions as x goes to minus infinity. So what happens not at the extreme right of the real line, but uh, instead of the extreme right, uh, you study what happens at the extreme left. So it is not like in naturals. Reals are completely symmetric, left and right. So we say, we give some definition here. Today for this introduction, it's just a matter of ideas, notion and definition. In the next lecture, I will give also some results. However, here we can write down limit for x going to minus infinity f of x converges to some real L if for every epsilon larger than zero there exists an x bar in R such that for x less than x bar then the distance between f of x and L is less than epsilon and the picture this time is the following. Here you have, also it was the other way around, here you have L, but let me cancel here. And what the function does here is hmm? So sort of another horizontal asymptote, but at minus infinity. And uh, the same way you can write what is the definition of limit for x going to minus infinity, f of x is equal to plus infinity. This means that for every k in R, there exists an x bar in R such that since x is going to minus infinity, here you have to write x less than x bar and then f goes to plus infinity, so f of x is larger than k. On the other hand, limit of x going to minus infinity, f of x is equal to minus infinity, if for every k in R there exists an x bar in R, such that, again, x is going to minus infinity, so x is less than x bar, and now also f is going to minus infinity, so f of x is less than k. Okay, uh, you just see that for characterizing, defining limits uh, uh, for x going to plus infinity and to minus infinity, we needed something like six definitions. Six definitions are really a lot, a really great lot. And, uh, but it is uh, not the end of the affair, because uh, uh, when you are dealing with uh, limits of function and not of sequences, the idea of limits can be extended. Not only x goes to plus infinity and to minus infinity. The real idea here is that uh, so I write here this generalization, which is very important. The limit is a notion that want to, wants to capture, aims at capturing the behavior of f, of a function f, as x approaches arbitrarily close Not only plus infinity or minus infinity, whatever means going arbitrarily close to plus infinity, it means going larger and larger, however, or minus infinity, but also a point of the real line. Okay? 
This is the main generalization of a limit from sequences up to functions. Not only x goes to plus infinity, not only x goes to minus infinity, but also x goes to x bar. And this is what we will explain. And the notion that is involved here is, the, is that of accumulation point. And of course, we will need the three other definitions for x going to x bar, but in the next lecture, we will be able to find the general definition that uh, collects, uh, that summarizes all other definitions. This will be a very important point from the conceptual point of view, from the cleanness of the presentation. And uh, uh, so the other notion that will be important will be the notion of neighborhood. Okay, we will define limits not only by using epsilon, epsilon k, epsilon delta, but we will use the notion of neighborhood. So for the next lecture, uh, if you want to prepare yourself, just give a look to the notion of neighborhood and the notion of accumulation point. We will start from there. However, there will be the, this will be the topics of the next recording of the next day. So have a nice day. We will see tomorrow at uh, 10 o'clock for the question time related.